Hi everybody, this is John, and I'm here today. Um, I'm looking at this fixture in my garage, and uh, this is a uh, fluorescent lighting fixture that I installed about six years ago, um, just a year or two after we moved into the house. And uh, recently it stopped working. And the other fixture, which is its twin on the other side of my garage, gets electricity, so I know that something is going on there. Um, and I think it's the ballast, because not that long ago, the other fixture had a ballast that blew. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy apart, we're going to swap out the ballast, and I'll talk a little bit about the ballast that I purchased. If you're looking at the fixture here at the outlet, you'll see, uh, you'll see the ballast right here. And uh, with lots of dirt on it, of course. Um, two wires, one running to each of the two pieces. Um, and on the other side, which you can't see, there's a tether to this other line. Um, and then right here, if I were to peel off some of my heat resistant tape, um, you'll see the connections as they were tied originally. But the fixture is grounded out, and uh, I've, got, I've got two wires ran here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking these apart, and I'm going to um, clip just as close as possible as I can to the ballast and save as much of the fixture line as humanly possible. What I purchased was a T8 Proline GE ballast to replace the one that's in the fixture. You'll notice that there are a handful of additional um, connective lines. We'll talk about that in a little bit. These are the, uh, the wire, the electrician's tool that I was talking about earlier. And of course you're going to need some of these uh, traditional wire turn-on caps. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uncoil these, uh, these old caps and the ballast, and those clearly have to remain together. I'm going to put these caps back on, because this is a really great way to get shocked. By the way, you should turn the electricity off before doing this, as an FYI. I am going to uh, work this uh, cord away and then all you really need is a standard Phillips head screwdriver to loosen the ballast off the fixture and I'm really glad that they thought about this when they made the fixture and then this ballast just comes right out. Both are in now. I need that little screw. And I'm going to secure the ballast. Five minutes later, valuable YouTube recording time. So that's now secured. Simply put, I'm going to grab two new caps because those look fatigued. I'm going to use yellow because I'm like yellow. And so the black one's already done. The white one's here. I'm taking this cap off. And like I said, all you have to do is really get them close. And the wire cap does the rest. Just make sure you get them good and twisted on snugly. So there they are. Uh, my ground is still held. Now I went ahead and took the liberty of stripping some of these wires and cutting the ends off. I cut about three feet off because you just don't need it. But what I'm going to do is exceptionally cautiously, um, I am going to use a cap and twist these leads together so that way I have a good connection. And I need to be exceptionally cautious because it's really easy to break these plastic ends off. And then, um, I don't know if they're easily replaceable or not. Do not let the fact that this has a red wire confuse you. There's a wiring diagram on the ballast that we have to focus on. Now I'm going to put these both in here. And again, we're just going to let the wiring caps, and my arm is blocking that view, no doubt. We're just going to let the wiring caps um, do the work 
on making those connections. And you'll feel it as it happens, as that connection is made, it gets tight and eventually those two wires will start to twist. Now I'm going to check this one again. That one's on nicely and that one's now on nicely. So you have these two pieces that you need to just kind of back out of the way because your bulb has got to go right through there. So now if we're looking at the entire piece, now I've got to run this red line through to this other side. But what you'll notice is that there, um, if you remember the white line, the white uh, piece of cord that was here, white piece of, uh, uh, of electrical line, I've got to connect those all together and I've got some distance here that isn't really being achieved. So um, I've got to make it a little bit of a, of a hack here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take um, a grafted in piece of that line, I'm going to connect it via a tie. And so now I've got just a little bit of extension line that makes all the difference in the world and I can reach over there much more comfortably. Right, so the exact same thing that I did on the other side I've got to do here. I'm going to make a really minor cut here on both and I'm going to strip a very very minor amount off the ends and all I really did was took some of the blue line that I cut off from the other end and I'm gonna I'm just gonna reinsert it now I'm gonna twist it off together and I'll do the same for this other end, but what it does now is it gives me an opportunity to have an extension. So I took the liberty of going ahead and making this other extension up. So now I've got three lines which will all run together in one, in only one of these um, wire caps. And again, just a little bit of twisting on, you'll feel it tighten up. Check it to make sure your connections are secure. Give it another twist and call it quits. I took the liberty of installing one of the bulbs back in just to see if we could get this guy to fire up. So let's see what happens. Oh, there we go, it works. Woo! When everything is said and done, don't forget to use some kind of the strong adhesive back um, metallic tape that uh, reflects the heat and the light even though you shouldn't have much off the fluorescent bulbs. Um, to take these things out of the way and honestly just to get them out of the space of your bulbs so then you can close that cover and then all you have to do is put your cover back on and you are done. This is a really great time to shore up some uh, empty spaces to the inside of your house or whatever else you have to do. Hey everyone this is John and we just got done um, pulling out fluorescent bulbs, two out of one fixture, changing a ballast, putting it back in, wiring it together, doing a little bit of uh, engineering to get it working. And, you know, um, it's really easy to forget that these pieces of, of, uh, of lights are anything other than just standard fare. Um, they've been around so long now. But don't forget, what a fluorescent bulb really, really serves the purpose of doing is, man, it saves a ton on energy. It's really inexpensive as a replacement. Um, and is a wonderful change in a lot of houses to bring a lot of light to a space. But I want to urge some caution on you as far as these bulbs go. These bulbs are pressurized. They have to be. And um, so you have to be cautious with them. If you drop one, it will absolutely explode. Um, and that creates a mess. You can step on the glass. If you have little ones, that's a problem. So just be very, very cautious. Enjoy the use of these, take good care of them, and uh, you should have one of these bulbs, like for instance this Philips bulb, which I'm not sponsored by, but uh, this particular Philips bulb has a 30,000 hour life capacity. Um, if you leave it all day, that's a thousand days um, plus some, right? That's three years of just straightforward running these bulbs all the time. And most of us leave them on for an hour to whack, maybe five at the most. So. Everybody, fluorescent bulbs, a really great change to your home. In, uh, enjoy the tech. Be safe.